from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Morialli and Hitch. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Morielli and Hitch Podcast 2023 edition. I'm Mike Morielli. That's Rob Hitchcock. I think Butko's here. Butko wasn't yeah. here last week. Butko yeah. missed last week. That was yeah. bad times for Butko. Right? Yes. Yeah, very bad. But, yeah. but he's apologized to us. He sent us both a gift certificate to the OCS. And uh, now we're moving on <laughs> to uh, bigger and better things. But uh, Robbie, how was your weekend? My long weekend. Long weekend, yes. Yeah. Still on it because uh, offices in uh, Arizona is uh, oh July fourth uh, holiday yeah, for you. So it's a holiday, so it's been uh, it's been good. Oh, it's nice and quiet now. What was that? Your air conditioner in there, Mike? I don't know. Oh, I'm just sitting in my office. Did that not just buckle? Did that not just be like? I don't know. To me, that that was really nice. It's well, so listen, I got in here, trouble because I didn't use this special handy dandy microphone. Now I'm using the microphone, and now there's more problems. Well, you sound better. You there sound you go. Better. But anyways, to get back on on uh, on Butko, uh, I got I told you I had a good buddy of mine, Andrew Andrew Clark Clarky. He listens all the time, right? He's got nothing else show. to do, eh? And he says you got to rip on him because oh, he missed, dude. So we found out we found out he he slept in. Um, you know, we had a nine o'clock show. He's you know if you noticed in the last couple of years, he's always said he's always piped in on like. You know, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, like later on. Oh yeah, day. to set up. To... Oh yeah, yeah. Never once the early morning. Do you have anything to say for yourself there, Michael? Like seriously, you, I know you slept in, but you still got your lampshade. Your yellow yeah. shade is at the back. No, the organ's still there. So what like happened? It's, it's not like you got up and combed your hair or anything, right? There, there is. You took your pillow. You just rubbed it on the top of your head. This is. Don't worry. We don't expect a lot from you. We don't expect you to come here looking amazing. We don't expect your room to be clean. We certainly don't expect this show to go well at all. Like we no, said, no expectations no. are very low. You can't yes. even pass our expectations, which are and none. Low. Quite frankly, no. there's zero there's expectations. None. There's there's none. No. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what you have to say. I know sleeping in is one thing, but you know what? Uh, our guest was pretty upset. Yes. Joan Armour. Joan Armour you was don't want sitting him there upset. for like f- fifteen minutes. Oh. Did you know, Botko, that? From he when he was eighteen years old until he was thirty six, there has always been one fight every day. Guess what? <laughs> he hasn't week. had a fight yet this year. Guess yes. what? And Guess he's... what's coming? <laughs> Guess what's yeah. coming? And he's coming in to do the. Uh, I think when's he coming in? I think in October. October I think he's I think. coming in. So he's going to be the alumni of distinction, and uh, we have maybe we'll get the gloves out and Ooh. the big the big pillow gloves. I don't think you would last. He'd, oh my God! I think he would fake a shot to you, and you'd go, go down. Just crumble. I, I, give, I recommend you crumble instantly. Um, hand out a few yeah, gift cards, like I said. When you're faced with a bear, you just cr- go into it. A... Just pretend they're yeah. yeah. Just go limp. So we're gonna forgive you for that the, the one time only because uh, it was a little bit embarrassing for our, our, our couple of our fans too. Yeah. But they actually liked it. But they said you got to rip you. Clarky said we got to rip you. We did enough. I think I know. You know, they want to make a, it about he you. He gave us the real excuse. We're gonna let it go, Rob. We're gonna let yeah. it go. It's, okay, it's a between we us. It's between okay. us. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Speaking was there, of, was there, was, hold okay, on, was so, there, was, wait, wait, was there a little bit too much pre involved? I don't know. I, I just oh. don't even want to. I don't even want to ask. Okay. The, the poor yeah, kid. It. Forget Poor kid. It. I mean, if you can't get up at nine in the morning, we got we got you got bigger problems. So we can't solve everything, Rob. We can't solve the no, world's problems. No, nope. we can't. So oh, nobody lost this weekend. Tie cats, no, no loss. No, nope. no everything loss. was good. Except, not much to talk about. Not much to talk about Ar- on the field. Except except the Argos. Three and oh, so, eh? Well, I don't know. Did you watch it yesterday? Well, I was told. I didn't watch it. So I, I got I, a note I actually, from my buddy. I, I watched it, and uh, the first half was a bit. I mean, uh, BC went down, scored seven nothing. I thought, okay, it's just, you know, they're good. Yep. Like, BC looks good. Their D looks good. And all of a sudden, six picks for Toronto. Six. One def- well, safety had three picks and he had a six total. Uh, one a punt return for a touchdown, interception for a touchdown. What? Uh, oh, the usually defense. I get up. The first thing I do is I put on Sports Center and I watch the highlight. I didn't get a chance today. Wow. Well, you would have saw Vernon Adams throw for six. And six I said to picks. myself, six picks, and they lost like 45 34. Um, but it wasn't close like that. I mean, if Toronto didn't score, 
on special teams and on defense, it would have been a lot closer. But and Kelly looked good. You know, remember Jim yeah, I, for the I, Buffalo Bills? So Jim was there. I, th- I don't know. I couldn't. I don't know if it's his. It's his, his nephew, grandson, nephew, nephew. nephew. Okay, because yeah. I would say grandson because he's got he looks old. Oh, he looks he had old. A, I think he had a stroke. Or he's he's been like sick. He's he suffered. I think with throat. some something with the throat, um, to his jaw. I think cancer in his jaw or yeah, his yeah, throat yeah, or his yeah, mouth. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. But he looked he looked good. He had a hat on yesterday. They showed him in the crowd. He was he was uh, two people within about four thousand that were at the game. Um, yeah, the game was horrible. So it must fans. have been in Toronto. I was in Toronto. Yeah. Like, uh, they don't sell tickets on the, I guess it would be kind of the north end. The non-TV side, the I non-TV think. The non-TV side. They got a TV, got to put the, the cameras on the other side. Cause they just it, do those little cutouts in, like they did for the NBA bubble. It's embarrassing. Oh, God. They're, like the other side against the, behind the benches, it was decent. I, I bet you there was no more than 8,000, 7,000. And half of those were players giveaway tickets anyway. It's horrible. You figure it's going to be a... Nice night, too. Uh, beautiful night. It turned out gorgeous, and it's a holiday. Why don't people go? I don't I, know. I, you know that here in, in, in Hamilton, we, we're not supposed to care, right? We're not supposed mm-hmm. to care. Well, as long as but people come out, the, they, I, then... I care for the league. I know. Because when I have... Um, colleagues that watch in, in the U.S. and Arizona, they say, oh, yeah, I picked up that game, you know, the Ticats are playing or the Argos are playing. Oh, you guys get, like, high school, eh? Like, there's, like, six, 7,000 people. They're like, it's not everywhere. It's just Toronto. It's nowhere else. It's <laughs> just, just the Toronto. biggest city oh, in the country. Get... Just the city with the most people. And I keep, I keep saying, I keep, like, defending Toronto. And I keep saying, like, okay, now they've got a product. It doesn't matter if they go 10 and 0. They're still going to have 8,000 out of game. It's it's sad. It's very, very sad. Well, I, I go back to the days where, you know, I was playing down there. We were winning the Great Cup with Doug Flutie. And believe me, it was a struggle then, man. It was a well, struggle then. When we, well, of course, when I went down to play against you. And, and even when we went down to play the Argos, at, like, we had one game at Labor Day, and it was in Toronto. I don't know if you remember yeah, that. There yeah. was the one time it wasn't in Hamilton, and I, I, there was 35,000 yeah, 30, people there. But even when, when we played, like they played at the Rogers Center, the Sky Dome, we used to call it, but the bottom bowl, it was spread out a bit, but there was still, it still looked like 25,000 oh, yeah. people. Oh, yeah. E- easy. Easy. Oh, and you know, your friend, you didn't see this, uh, they got interviewed. So D.A., Damon Allen. Oh, yeah. got oh I saw him last time. week at Edmonton. Oh, he had these beautiful, you should have seen these shoes on. Oh, knee deep. <laughs> Anyways, he's, he's and, and your friend, and I love him to death, Mookie Mitchell. Oh, Mookie's the best. Isn't he? Mookie he is did, a he character. Hasn't changed, he hasn't changed a bit. Not a bit. He looks identical. So him and him and DA are up uh, on the all time list for the for the Argos. And hey, rightfully so. Of those guys. Oh, right. Twelve thousand so. yards. Twelve thousand yards pass um, in re- in receiving yards. And I'll never forget when the story that you used to say. And he told me this when he was at your place. Remember we were at your house, all those, that place you had on. Oh uh, yeah, in Burlington. Yeah, Burlington. And I'll never forget it. It's like you know when you play the game, you don't when you when you see other guys from the other teams, you don't really. You don't really think about them looking at you as a good player like that. Yeah. Mookie looked at me, and I didn't know this until he told me. He goes, "Man, we used to, we used to be in the in our meeting rooms." And he said, "We didn't want to catch the ball over Nobody the Nobody wanted to get hit. We were going we to get hit. And, and, and he, this, the way he tells the story, oh, it's. I said, "Really? Seriously?" And I know, I know. If you don't come across, you come oh, across yeah. you're going to get hit. But just by him, like a, such an elite player, to to say that we used to game plan. None of us wanted to go across the middle. I said, "Wow." Well, Nah, go and get too hit. bad. <laughs> too bad. Well, that, that's the, just, back, the back yeah. story is for those that, that don't know, when I was playing in Toronto, which would have been my second go round, which was, I think, 01, 02, 03, Mookie lived with me in yeah. Burlington. Oh, this okay. guy. And I think, uh, do we have a guest today? Yeah. Well, so this yeah. guest, because I know who the guest is, yeah, it certainly knows our, our fellow pal Mookie and what oh, kind yeah. of character he is. So yeah. Mookie had the best time of his life in my house. Didn't have to worry about a damn thing. Plus, at that time, no I would, you know, all the filthy McNassies were up and running. There was one down the down the street, and we spent every night there. And he got behind the bar. And he, oh, it was just a, a an absolute. Never paid rent. Never, never paid, paid a dime. Oh no, no, tell, no, no. Tell, tell the boys what they did to you and uh, what they did with your furniture. Well, yeah, you know, I had had the boys <laughs> over, including my good friend uh, Mike O'Shea. 
um, and a bunch of the other uh, guys from the Argos at the time came to my house, you know, a nice house in, in Aldershot. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, we're having a good time playing cards, whatever. And, you know, o- O'Shea comes downstairs, first of all, wearing at that time my, my wife's uh, one-piece bathing suit and <laughs> bra and underwear, whatever they went through, all the drawers, did whatever they wanted to do. I got so frustrated with these guys. We were playing cards for hours. The one guy took a leak at the table. He was so yeah. bombed, he took a leak at, the, at my house. So that's yeah. it. I had enough. I was like, you guys are dead to me. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Worst mistake of my life. When yep. I woke up, my whole house was emptied. Every chair, TV, couch, table, credenza, everything was Pictures. on the front lawn. And I oh, I went, what? I opened the door, and uh, uh, they honk and take off. And then it starts to rain. And my whole house is on my front lawn. Oh, I was pissed. Neighbors I thought was. it was a free for all. Oh yeah, thought it was like a, take, you know whatever. Here's couch. a yard sale. <laughs> Go ahead, take one, take this, take that, whatever you want. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm only mad because I didn't think of it. I wish that was yeah. me, and I would have done that to those guys. Yeah, oh, uh, the joy of the, the game. Funny stories. That that was a funny story. The joy oh, of the gosh. game. But Cole, yeah. speaking of that, is there a friend on? Not on, eh? I heard. I heard. Uh, Botko, tell him. Tell him you tried uh, this guest. Uh, we we won't say his name until he comes on. But I, I guess they tried his audio and stuff. Yeah. Bucko, tell him. Tell him how he came onto the show about yeah, half an hour ago. Shirtless. Shirtless. <laughs> In the test. Okay. First of all, if you see this guy, he should always wear a shirt. Probably wear a turtleneck. Always. Yes. Always. I don't think he's worked out a day. Not a life, chance. Honestly. Ever. Not a chance. No, I don't think Never. so. No, no, I can't wait to ask him about that. And hope to God he doesn't come on with his shirt off when the show starts. He won't. He, he would know better. To do for that. his own self-respect, he's got to not. He's got to put a shirt. There's got to be a shirt rule for him. One hell of a player, though. Oh, my God. Great player. Yeah. Great yeah. player. Built, hey, built like a bag of milk, but he Absolutely. could. Absolutely. Uh, but he could play. Didn't spend he long time play. in Hamilton, but no, spent a did. long time in the CFL. Repeated yes, all-star. Great Cup champion, good dude, good yeah. dude. Well, before he comes on, I think he's coming on in a couple of minutes, nine fifteen or so. But, um, anyways, we've got to talk a little bit more about uh, about the league and the games this weekend. But did you? Uh, so Winnipeg three and one, BC three and one. Uh, I think Saskatchewan's two and one. One and two is is Calgary, and then zero oh and three is Edmonton. Poor Edmonton. Oh my God. Poor Edmonton. Poor Hamilton. But. I tell you, Ottawa. They Ottawa is in Hamilton next this Saturday coming. It, they're a good team. Oh yeah, oh, Ottawa's they're, got they're, a decent team. Ottawa's, now they're still Ottawa's figuring out team. their their QB situation, but they, they seem to be they won, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the, thankfully, the, the Ty Cat situation is not nearly as bad as what's happening in no. Edmonton. What's happening in Edmonton, no. Edmonton is just a, a colossal mess. What What's his name? Is the the GM and coach there? Oh, uh, Jones. Jones, I don't know. He's this doesn't seem like he's the right fit. He's back there. He was there, then gone, then back. He went to high school, came back or something. He just seems like he would not be a good. Pl- I would not want to play for that. He's guy. not a friendly guy. No, he's not. Not he's a friendly not. guy. You know, and you got to win. He's, he's, if you if you, those those guys need to win, right? Because if winning I, it takes yeah. care of a lot of the the BS. But if you're losing, oh boy. I shouldn't say that because I don't know him, right? Yes, but, at but the you same said time, it already. Yeah, I know. So, still, so whatever. You're not, he's not a players coach like O and 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 O'Shea and, and Coach O, and they're they're not guys that you want to go to the field with and play and play for because these guys have done it. I don't know. I just don't see. I just don't see him uh, it, it, to bring an organization to bring him back. Like he was there forever. Then he, now he's. A, I think he's a GM or president. I think both them. Yeah, I think he's got every every title there. Oh, well. That's, oh, that's Butko, what are we gonna do? He's here. Yep. Our friend go. is here. Yes. All right, Rob, do you want to make the introduction? This is a no, fellow. No, like I, he's, you played. Oh, I can't. This, I, 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 I laugh don't at even him know. I, like, I don't think he deserves like a big, long intro. No. Like I think no. we just introduced the guy. No one will know who he is because they're all no. Ticat fans. And, uh, and yeah, we'll the just, Cat's Claws will know him. The Cat's Claws will know him. Um, yeah. you know, we certainly know him. He yeah. is... Uh, well, I would say the opposite of uh, of a man with a great physique, 
but he yes. sure was uh, one hell of a football player and one hell of a teammate. Yeah. Let's bring on yes. our friend Adrian Smith. Oh, there he is. Look at this guy. Oh, look at the look, fake look, background. That's not even your house. That's not, not even your house. <laughs> That's a fake background. This is, this is an MTV crib. It's not MTV crib, dude. Not MTV. Look at the shirt. Played one year. Look at the shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh would we lost oh. him already? He's, he's got bad internet. That's oh, right Butko. We were, the, you remember when American Idol went, you know, during COVID and they had to send all the guests their proper microphone and Wi-Fi setup? Yeah. Oh, here he is. Yeah. Oh, you paid your bill. again. You paid your bill. Where'd you get the shirt from 1994, first of all? <laughs> oh, bad. This is bad. Wow. Looks like he's working Who's out. Who's that? My son. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, my God. We forgot about Keandre, that. Keandre, right? <laughs> that's right. Keandre. Wow. Wow, oh, this is bad. You are guess what? You've this done your bad. research. You've done your research. Oh yeah, buddy. As no you know, buddy. we don't we don't do any research on zero this research. I know that. I, I, let's let's get going here because you know part of this podcast is on YouTube and about six people watch. The other part goes on some sort of platform that uh, everybody else can listen to. So as long as we got your voice, Adrian, we're good. Yep. How you I been, fella? Say, cool. How all you is been? well. All is well. How about you guys? Oh, we've been good, man. We've been good. We had a little, you know, we talked about you without revealing who you were uh, before you came on. And the best way Please, for us on, to come. Oh, what for did, God's what did sake. Say? What, did what, what did we say? <laughs> yeah. The what truth. Did you say? The, the truth. truth. <laughs> all that, that you had a body like a bag of milk. And we were surprised you lasted more than one game in the league. Fair, 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 fair. That's fair. That's fair. I was, I was, I was following, I was following the pinball model. Exactly, or the Andrew Grigg model. We had one on our team too. It was, it, that's exactly it. But yeah, listen, I, I, you and I were teammates for a long time. We had a hell of a lot of fun. We won a lot of games. Um, you were a repeated All Star in the league. You won all these great cups. Um, you're looking good. You got into broadcasting when things were done. You got a son that now plays in the CFL. Man, a lot of stuff has happened to you. Why don't you give us a little once over on what's going on in your life right now? Well, um, once over, uh, as you said, I have a son that's in the league right now, which is pretty cool. I have a 26 year old daughter who is doing her own thing, which is pretty cool. And something I don't want. I don't want to dig. So, but you're gonna read between the lines. You will read between the lines. I have an 11 year old daughter who is in competitive swim. Oh, see? <laughs> I can give you some tips from back in the day. I can give you some tips. Uh, it might be with it might be with her. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing very well. She's doing very well. She's uh, like the 11 years old and uh yeah, I mean, you know, just everyday things, working, wife, kids, family. You know, just doing the mill type of thing. Got out of coaching when my son got through, so here I am now. Are you, are you oh. still in, uh, last time I saw you, uh, I think we were, it was like Kitchener at some, uh, it was like an insurance yeah. or something. I think yeah. that had to have been 15 years ago, maybe, eh? Yeah. It had to have been no, something not, like not that, but that. not doing no. that. What do you do? Well, you look good because you do have I mean, a fake I mean, background. I'm in law enforcement now. I'm in correction. Really, eh? Oh, that's Good why he you. showed up. Hey, that's why he showed up with his shirt off at the beginning. Yeah, of okay. This show. is listen. We heard yeah. you came. First of all, there's a shirt rule for you, and there always has been. Okay, you know that. You know there's a shirt rule for you. That's uh, you know, this is not. You're not Joe Mofford, right? We know this. <laughs> listen, I did the best to what God gave me. <laughs> you you shot way above your weight, way above. Now this is funny because much. this is the weird twist of fate that life is. I played, you know, through my career, I was known as Meat. You played, yeah. you were known as Pee Wee. So this is like a, a weird twist of fate. But <laughs> sometimes this shit happens. You just gotta roll with it. Exactly. Pee Wee, Pee Wee. <laughs> oh, hey, you know who I see a lot? Um, Marcelo Simmons. How's CeeLo doing? Yeah. He's in corrections too. No. 
he's in correct. He's in. Um, he does uh, escort officers, prison okay. escort officer. So yeah, he comes escorts. To Ryan, it's like, and is that the stuff. same uh, thing that Donnie Wilson did after the game? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I saw I saw Donnie Wilson last no. year. Yeah, he can't, oh. remember he got inducted to the Hall that's of Fame. Right, that's right. That's so, right. Uh, I was at the game because they were playing the tie cut that game. It's an Argo game, and then uh, he actually came over to the house and we hung out for a little bit. So yeah, oh, Donnie was a good dude. He was a, he was a hell of a lot of fun. Man, this still the same. Really, Nothing still the smile. Still the same. Every same dumb smile, same dumb laugh. <laughs> Looks the same too, and he's like sixty-three years old. Something like that. He's, oh, he's what a good dude. dude! What a good dude! Hey, speaking about who's looking the same, uh, Pee Wee is is Mookie Mitchell. He was on last night, so him and Da got on to the Argos Hall, uh, not Hall of Fame, but the, the Wall all-time of Fame, team, yep. and whatever they call. It, but Mook looks, Mookie looks. I was just telling me earlier, he looks just the same and talks. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he's classic. It's him and Da had. Also, he came in town, and yeah, exactly yeah. the same. Exactly the same, yeah. Where, where, are, you, where are, are you living? Great. Oh, yeah. Where are you living? Where are you living huh? right now? Where Who? are you living? You. Richmond Hill. Okay. Richmond Hill. Uh, they don't pay the internet out there? <laughs> uh, I, I think it might be. Where are you at? Lancaster? Oh, no, wait, dude. I, I've moved 15 uh, times since then. Yeah. I've uh, changed yeah. my phone number about 35 times. You like, change uh, your occupation like 25 times. Too. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you got to keep reinventing yourself. That's all you got to do. Hitch, I think I know somebody you know also. Uh oh. Yeah, it's, it's a real uh oh, too. <laughs> Who's that? Joey Gentile. Yeah. Oh, my God. You know Joey? I was just with him yesterday, two days ago. His, uh, you know, so, his, so my, my, uh, my wife, Michelle, her best friend is Lori Gentile, which is Lori's Joe's, uh, it's her brother. So oh. I, I just saw them at a, at a birthday graduation on, uh, I guess it was two days ago, Sunday, we were there. But gotcha. uh, yeah, Joe, you know, so Joey's at, so Joey? Don't, or is don't it, tell him I said hi. <laughs> oh, I won't. I, I remember you, I remember you, uh, I remember him telling me this a couple years ago that he worked with you, right? Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah, did. that's right. He did, but then he's he's moved on to another facility, so he's okay. not he's not. Okay, because I, I think because he's I think this is how it was, Mitzi. I think when he said this like five years ago, it's because yeah, this guy worked with Adrian. Uh, he said he played for the Thai Cats. Yeah, it looks like crap. Doesn't look like no a football he player. <laughs> I said, oh no, he he played. He's a good player. Really? I said, oh yeah, you should look him up. So anyways, he did, and oh yeah. So I know I don't hang out with with yeah. Joey. I, I hang out with uh, with well Lori's yeah. husband Anthony. But anyways, small world, man. Oh yeah, man, small world. So Pee Wee, let's let's get a little let's get your background a little bit here for those that don't know. You started with the Tie Cats, then you went to Memphis, and then came back for your long run in Toronto. So number one, coming to the Tie Cats, what the heck was that like? And then what was it like going to Memphis? Because that's, you know, we all remember what that expansion <laughs> disaster fiat. I mean, it was fun as hell. Like, we used to roll the town, get paid American per diem, go nuts and do all their stuff. But what was that first year like in Hamilton? And then, you know, American expansion, the whole rest of the thing. So, um, so graduated university, and I had to try out with the Cleveland Browns. So the Cleveland Browns didn't work out. So get this phone call from Greg Mons. Monzi. Right, and so he says, uh, hey, uh, we have your rights. You know, you want to come up to Canada and play ball. And immediately I said, Canada, don't you have igloos up there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, legit, I legit said that. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I was none the wiser. He said, no, no, there's no igloos, blah, blah, blah. You know, why don't you come up and whatever. We'll see what happens. So came up to Toronto, I mean, to Hamilton, obviously, and uh, came up with Tim Cofield. Oh, so beast. Tim Cofield was living in Kansas City, and he played for the Chiefs for a few years, and he actually got to know my father. Him and my dad saw each other at the gym. I didn't go to the gym. And my father <laughs> no. saw each other. <laughs> Shocking. Make that clear. Make that clear. Shocking. <laughs> anyway, we made a connection, so we came to Hamilton again. So uh, went to Hamilton, played that whole year. Everything was you know, great. Had a good time, blah, blah, blah. So then uh, Memphis had a uh, the U.S. expansion to talk about U.S. expansion. So Mons went to Memphis as the general manager. 
So he took a bunch of Chai Cat guys with him to, to Memphis. They actually traded me. Was that the trade? No, that wasn't traded. I, I traded for Calvia. I think that was the year after. Yeah, that was the year after. Calvia. But so DA yeah. went with you too, right? So Yeah, so DA was in Edmonton at the time. Right, right, right. So they, so DA came to Memphis. Eddie Brown came to Memphis. Uh, Cofield came to Memphis. A couple of other guys came to Memphis. Terry Wright came to Memphis. So uh, we had a great time in Memphis. But here's here's the thing. You all, we were really, we were really um, carved out of what you all were thinking about us, because there was no Canadian that's right tele, tele broadcast of things that were going on. So we were totally secluded from anything that happened in Canada. All we had to concentrate on was Memphis, and right. they don't, I don't think I don't think I watched a CFL game until like we came on a road trip up there, and then like you have a CFL weekend, right? And you saw a Saturday Sunday game or a Friday Saturday game. We were totally excluded from anything broadcast, yeah. no news, no network, no nothing. So we're just Crazy. down there idle yeah. on our own. And it was a great for us. The first few games were really, really good. But then the Americans, they hated the rules. Yeah. Our field sucked. Oh, our your field, field was br- yeah. That was the field. Worst. So, so everybody knows, Worst. if I remember this correctly, your field had the turf on the outside, like five yards on either side. The end zones were like six yards, then angled, and then flat in the back, dipped yeah, off. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. yeah, and there's a few times where we were threatened not to play the game because of the field, whatever, whatever. I think they had to become an agreement between both teams, like, okay, we'll just deal with it, blah, 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 blah. But there was no – there was no – they just won the money. CFL right. just won the no, money. No, that's all they wanted, the money grab. So whatever happened, yeah. happened after that. So – um so played there, had a great year there. And then uh, Mons, again, comes to Toronto in 96. So he brings all those Memphis guys to Toronto. And that started my run in Toronto over like the, next, the next 10 years. Interesting. Wow. So your yeah. first introduction to Pinner wasn't until – well, I guess you would have played against them when you were in Hamilton in 95. But you – because yeah. I'm, I'm saying that because for people that don't know, you and, you and Pin were, were best of buds. I mean – you really, really tight, and I'm sure you still are. But you know, he's actually Candor's godfather. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go, there you go, uh, and uh, and what a good godfather to have, that's for sure. Um, but that, you know, for us to be guys, you know, at that time, I was playing in Toronto when when we went down. You were you were in Hamilton, Rob, going to the U.S. But I don't know what your experience was, Rob, going there. It was like in some cases like really cool like it was a cool experience for it to go into something that was completely different it was a disaster of an experience but it was like pulling up landing getting off the plane and all of a sudden you got you know all the cops lining up to escort you into town and and all that it was just like it was big time you know u.s style football until it wasn't yeah that's how the U.S. colleges are right. Right, you had the, the marshals there. They, they 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 parade you wherever you need to go. They make sure you need. It. And that I don't know if that's right, wrong, or different, good or bad. Whatever your experience is, I thought it was kind of cool. I think yeah. it was kind of cool. Well, you if, know, but that they just they, they did everything top notch. Now yeah. again, there wasn't nobody in the stands yeah. afterwards. <laughs> no, once college football started, hey, see you yeah. later. Yeah. You feel like you're a somebody because you're young and you feel like you're a somebody, right? Like you're on this bus and you're going through red lights and everything. But let me, let me, let me, let me just backtrack it for a second. I hope Pinball's a better godfather than I am to. Uh, oh my Mike's God, Rob's yeah. my daughter's godfather. <laughs> he's about hey. he's about five presents still in arrears. Yeah, but I've just, given yeah. her. I've, I've. Hey, now I we can. Now she's got. How now we just now? text her money. Four fifteen. I just text her money now. Just text her money. E transfer. Oh, That's it, buddy. I said, does she have e transfer? Yeah, she's got e transfer. You had it before you did. I said, oh, she probably did. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So I, I thought for me going down the in the states because when I was there, Vegas. Uh, I came in in ninety five, and Vegas was only there for one year in ninety four. So I think Mitzi, we were there. It was Shreveport, Birmingham, Memphis. Um, Memphis, of course. San Antonio. Uh, yeah. Because Sacramento San, moved to San Antonio. San Antonio was fun. Baltimore was a great yeah. spot. Baltimore was great. And Baltimore was the Montreal team that went. Yes. Right? Essentially, and Montreal that came. Essentially, yeah. and then came back. So, for for me, in Baltimore, I think, was the best because they had 30,000 people at their games. Yeah. Like Mike yeah. Pring, Pring, Pringle was there. That was the one. And Birmingham, actually, I think the, it was their second game. I think people just came out to see 
what the CFL was like, and there was 25, 30,000 people there. So when I went, at least while well, we all went, I don't know about you guys, but it was full. The stadiums are pretty full, except Memphis was one that. So many M- Memphis, was, Memphis was like uh, maybe Birmingham. They were full the first two or three, couple, three or four yeah. weeks. Yeah. And then Baltimore, they just had football fans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even as you all know, you go to the Grey Cup every year. You still got Baltimore still fans yep. with yep. Baltimore gear that come up to the Grey Cup. So they were just yeah. football fans. So they packed that stadium every single, every single. Yeah, was, yeah. that was a love, cool. Love Baltimore's a cool experience because they were you sing the national anthem and the rockets were glare. The fireworks went off and the bombs were, you know, the the uh, stuff was going. You ru- you run out of the tunnel where Johnny Unitas played. You kind of that that was a cool experience. And then you'd yeah. go to uh, Shreveport, and you'd want to wear like a flak jacket, and just make sure that the bulletproof vest, so you can make it through the game. That, that neighbor, so Memphis's the Liberty Bowl yeah. and the Independence Bowl were dead in the hood. Oh. Both of them were dead. You're one block away from that. <laughs> oh yeah, I was like this little you know white kid from Stony Creek. I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Oh, hey, what's uh? So, are you been? What have you been following the Argos? Have you been following the the league a little honestly, bit? Been watching? Honestly, honestly I, I I catch it when I can. Yeah. Um, you know, life gets so busy. Again, my kids, all my kids were in, in sports heavily, so you yeah. know, I, I yeah. can't sit in front of a TV on Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. If I caught yeah. it, I caught it. If I didn't, I like, even like I went to a lot of uh, Thai Cat games last year. I still plan on going to some games this year, but like my daughter's swim schedule. All oh, over yeah. the place. You know, we meet some weekends, three that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I catch it on TV. I, I you know, I keep track. Yeah. You know, like the box score and stuff like that. But like sitting down, going to stadiums. I haven't I haven't been to a game yet this year. It's just it's just so hard with, her, with all these different schedules that you're, that you're juggling. Give it. Give us. Give us. Uh, uh, our fans here, 150 fans that we have. And by the way, we're talking to Adrian Smith, everybody. So, and it's people that don't watch this on 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 the YouTube, they're listening to it in the in the cars. They don't know who it is. So we're always told our producers always saying, just say who it is every five minutes or so. It's yeah, Adrian yeah, Smith, yeah. all time Hall of Famer, the best player, blah blah blah. Anyways, what's it like? What's it like to have a son that followed your footsteps? Because I have a sixteen year old who's like a five handicap golfer. He's he's a great soccer player, double A hockey player. Hasn't played football, right. and a part of me. He's 16. I want him. I want him to play one more year just to because he's a good athlete. I think he would excel. I I just I think he would. Yeah. But I'll never push him into the game. But what right. what's it like? What's it like for well, for your boy to follow you like that? That must well, be. It's, you know, honestly, it, it, it is it is a cool it is a cool experience. At the end of yeah. the day, it's a cool experience. I did not want him to play football, right? Yeah. As you as I don't know if both of y'all know this, but I didn't start playing football till my last year in high school. Mm-hmm. And the only reason that happened is because I didn't want to do basketball conditioning. I hate it. I hate it. Well, that, that explains well, a lot. That this explains a lot. Now I'm piecing it all together. There's no yeah. doubt you didn't see the inside of the gym for a long time. <laughs> when I played I, baseball was my sport growing up. And, you know, so I was, I was a really good baseball player. Then played my last year in high school and ended up getting a scholarship, blah, blah, blah. So the school that I went to, there's the only school that said you can play baseball and football. So right. Missouri State University, so I played both. So I played football, got redshirted my first year, and then I went to play baseball. I said, no, you're not going to let you play baseball. You got a football scholarship. You know, we don't know what you can do because you got redshirted, blah, blah, blah. So I thought about quitting football to play baseball, but I didn't want my parents to have to pay for university. Right? Interesting. So I got a student ride, played the football just because it ended up working out for me. Then my son comes into the picture. And he's a good soccer player. He's a good baseball player. Fantastic baseball player. I'm not. Even, I'm not saying this because you know he's my son, but he's probably the best defensive center fielder I've seen. Really young, growing up, he was lefty the whole night. And he yards. played here in Canada. He played. He played really? here in Canada. He played for Mississauga North Tigers. He actually played with uh, Bo Naylor, who is now the catcher for uh, the Cleveland Indians. Oh wow! And then, and Bo Naylor's older brother, Josh Naylor. Is actually a right fielder, left fielder for the Cleveland Indians, and they have okay. a, another have another brother's up and coming. So the Naylor brothers, if you look those up, he played with them growing up. So we had some pretty good baseball teams, right? We go travel. We went to U.S. and travel. Went to Cooperstown, blah blah blah, and we, we probably lost like five games in five years. Like they were they were that good. Wow. But he he grew up with me in the locker room. He came to the locker room all the time. You know, you know the Argos let kids come to the locker room. They hang out. 
you know, he, he knew Stein, you know, yeah. growing up, you know, blah, 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 things of that stuff. Uh, he knew uh, Mark Washington, he ran to him, you know, people like that. So, you know, he was always around the game. And he, he would always play, and I'd say, nope, you can't play till you're 13. I said, you can't play yeah. till you're 13. The reason I said that, I wasn't driving him away from the game, but there was a lot of good coaching. You know, you right. don't want to get hurt unnecessarily, get a concussion, yeah. you know, at 9, 10 years old. So, I was basically saving him, but I really, I really was pushing him to base. If I was pushing him anywhere, it was to baseball. He, he was just a really good baseball player. Nice. He was born January third, two thousand. The morning of January third, two thousand twelve, he comes downstairs. He says, "I'm twelve. I'm thirteen years old. You said I have to play football, and I'm thirteen years old." Wow. And that was it. So he's been thinking about it. He's been thinking he's about, been it. about it for, for five years. Whenever, whenever I told him. You know, you know how you brush kids off. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 12, yeah. 13. You know, they're not. They're gonna forget about it. That morning, January third, that morning, he comes downstairs. You said I could play football. I'm playing football. And then the yeah. bad part about it is, football and baseball are in the same season. Yeah. So yeah. He had to pick one. He knew what he wanted. He was full gung ho after that, and and it worked out. Good. Worked yeah, out. Yeah, uh, that's so amazing. I, but I wasn't one of those dads. I was one of those dads. You gotta play football. Once you fall my footsteps, I was trying to put him to baseball, but football was his calling. Uh, interesting. You you mentioned a couple names there, and I want to just talk about a couple guys you mentioned, uh, Steiny and Osh. You didn't mention Osh, yeah. but it just it popped into my head because of uh, obviously you know we we play with them. You spent a long time with those guys. Now you see them, you know, for many years now coaching like what from when we played and in, in the i'm not going to say the caliber of coaching but you know the coaches we had to now the new school you know did you expect that from those guys i certainly did like i knew they knew the game better than our coaches did at some point oh 100 yeah 100 yeah 100 yeah. i didn't think steiny would go that direction even though he was always coaching right but I, I, I saw him doing something in business or, or something right. else, or whatever. But you know, he got led to it, and obviously he's the president of football operations and head coach. He's done great, and, and I'm happy for him and everything. But I definitely saw Osh. I didn't see Stein in the beginning, but I Osh one hundred thousand yeah. million percent through and through. He actually, you know, funny thing, a lot of people don't know. This. He actually asked me if I would come coach DB. <laughs> you know, he he asked me when he first started. He's like, would you coach? Uh, would you come and coach receivers? And uh, he he goes, we can pay you whatever. I said, well, how about I coach two positions so you can pay me more? That's because right. you know? <laughs> the one position ain't gonna do it. But uh, you know, sometimes I, I I kick myself because that environment would have been just amazing. But I am not built for coaching. No way I'm am I really staying there all day. I'm the same way. I'm the same. I'm telling you another cool thing. Sorry, uh, you asked me another cool thing, uh, Hitch. Um, so obviously I played with Osh uh, like nine out of my 12 years, 10 out of my 12 years, whatever, from Hamilton all the way to Toronto. Um, our kids, Mike Jr. and Mike and uh, Keandre, they kind of grew up together in the locker room. Well, they played at Guelph together, right? Yeah, that's right. They, they, they went to birthday parties together and stuff like that. Nice. And then they went to Guelph together for, for a year. But that, that, that was pretty cool because they were both on the same recruiting trip there also so it's kind of like a reconnection at that point in time so that was pretty cool too and both and receivers kind of, yeah both receivers they both stay in touch with each other uh, they, they became pretty, pretty good friends as well too i don't want to tell those stories but yeah they <laughs> no, no, no 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 we understand no, no. we understand those <laughs> yeah, so that, that was wow. cool that we both played together and then our both sons played together also. wow that's yeah, awesome I, that's awesome I, getting back to like not built for coaching. Uh, same same thing. I, I just don't think I see the turnaround, and I, I I see head coaches that are now special teams coordinators. I see guys that are you know successful that are you know somewhere coaching. It just does like I couldn't go from BC to Edmonton to Montreal well, to Toronto. I mean, you're always you're always looking for the next right. next job. Like the job yeah. always was there. Like you said, yeah. Benavides was the next big thing. Yeah. He coach, and now he's a special teams coordinator. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's the guy? Who's, who's who? Did Hamilton get again? Rainbow. 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 Yeah. Now he's he jumps from country to country, place to place. And when you have a family and stuff, you got to keep all that stuff in mind, right? You know, you don't want to be an absentee father. You know, a satellite dad. You know, put all the pressure yeah. on your wife to bring the kids, and you're you know jumping around the country, moving them here, moving them there. It's like military. It's a kids. commitment, I, I man. 
it's a commitment. You know, like you it's know like not just a dream. personal commitment; it's no. a whole family commitment, right? That you know, you know who has a dream job? Kyle Walters. Oh yeah, oh, perfect. GM of, he's, he just writes his own ticket every year. What does he have to do? O'Shea does all the work. Osh. He's done a great right. job. Him and Osh and and Wade yeah. Miller from, and Danny Max there, there too, right? Yeah, Danny Max there. Yep. Yeah. They, they 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 put together a good puzzle there. Have you seen uh, Have you seen Wade Miller lately? We saw him at the Grey Cup in Hamilton. Oh. Uh, uh, he's he's a big man. He's a sumo he's, wrestler. He's, he's not big. He's, he's, oh, I, he's I can't big. believe he breathes. <laughs> hey, he's he's big. He's a big. We, he's uh, a big fella. He's a big yeah, fella. Yeah, meet meet wasn't at the the Hamilton Grey Cup two years ago, so uh, we we went down and we and and uh, Kyle Walter says, yeah, come to. Uh, yeah, that cause said, come to the Sheridan. We're doing a little party for the Winnipeg and blah, blah. So I said, great. So we show up. It's the board of directors. There's like 12 of them with their wives and kids. There's like 27 people in there. And they're all high-end board members. And we walk in with four or five guys. We start doing double some fisted. shots. And, we're checking double. Yeah. And, and I said, is this okay? So I was just like, yeah, don't worry about it. It's all good. Just stay on this side. Stay on this side. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, I remember oh. Ford. You know, I remember. You know, I remember. Oh, used to hate Wade Miller. Yeah, Osh hated yeah. Wade Miller. Yeah, he did. I won't, I won't say despise, but they had some. They had some fights back and forth. Oh, it's a battle. First, first of all, teams. Osh hated everyone at some point <laughs> in time. Let's let's face it. And sometimes he hated himself because he would just he would nobody was harder on himself than Mike. This guy no. and nobody worked harder than Mike. I honest to God, you don't you couldn't build. If you built a football player, you would build Mike O'Shea. I'm not kidding you. Top to bottom. You're, you're saying the same thing. I know you've seen the same thing because we're in the same locker room with him. I don't care if it was his knee, his back, or whatever. He is not coming off the field. No. Nope. Special teams. He he would he will do his special teams duty. Yes. He will. He didn't take a break off special teams or anything like that. Just like, he would do. He would. He would. He would. He would play every single solitary down that he was supposed to play. Yep. At a high level. Uh, he, at a hundred percent with a torn with a torn ACL, oh, ACL yeah. the whole the whole nine yards. Yeah, I mean yeah. It, like, he would put the, like he had to put them back together every game. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I was out, I was out Mr. Winnipeg Potato Head, Mr. Ago, Potato Head, and uh, Osh picked me up. We were we were going back to his place or something, and I didn't notice. But as we get out of the car, it took him six minutes to get out of the car for his back to actually straighten up. He walked hunched over like Gollum for about three, four minutes before he could slowly. Ar- I said, what is wrong with you? He goes, ah, just a little, little tightness. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, but, wow. but led by example, right? There were, there was a few of those guys because listen, all of us that played are obviously good enough to play professional football. And then there's those guys that are just like, wow. Like, there's there's something special. Osh was one of those guys. Pinner was one of those guys. Um, you, you know, Mook was one of those guys. Just that extra gear, extra something. You were one of those guys. I'm not joking. I don't like to give you compliments. Believe me. No. This is, this it hurts me inside. <laughs> but, you know, you're the guy that came up with a big play all the time. Yeah. And not just on defense. I mean, your, your punt kick returns. Um Big time plays and big time games. I mean, like, when you played university, was that your game, or did that just evolve over time? You know what? It, it evolved over time. Um, I I knew what I could do, and and there's a lot of you know with punt return and kick return. There's a lot of baseball in there, center field, left field. So right. those things kind of keep easy. But I'm tell you the tell you the truth. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you where I gained my confidence. Don Matthews. Oh, legend. Don Matthews. I had confidence, but he put me over the top. Right. And I will I will say he's the catalyst of that. And the reason I say that is we had private conversations and you know we talked and we had a nice it's 97, we had great teams. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's go to the 97 team. Let's stick with the 97 team. Mook was there, Jimmy the Jet was there. Like, where am I gonna punt return and kick return when Mookie and Jimmy the Jet are there? Right. Yeah. I was always that Pinner, Pinner, Mookie, Jimmy the Jet. Who had, who's going to do kick return? Right? You don't. There's no space for it, even right. though you're a decent kick returner. And I play, and I play punt return in Memphis and Hamilton, blah blah blah. But Don Matthews said, "You know what, Pee Wee? I'm always going to have confidence in you. I've seen your game before. I always have confidence." In you. So, um, 
Um, the 97 kickoff right before that halftime, yep. Moot got moved for the touchdown. And he got hurt. He hurt his knee, right? And Matthew says, Pee Wee, go in. <laughs> okay. And so he says, get in and just run to the right. So ball, he said, they're not going to kick it to pinball. They're not going to kick it. They're going right. to kick it to you. Just run to the right. Ran to the right, got like 50 yards, and Vanderjack kicked the field goal right before halftime. Yep. Yep. Okay. Comes in at halftime. Said, Pee Wee, you're my man. Said, we're going to fake the pinball. All these motherfuckers are going to run the pinball. <laughs> and you're going to be wide open going down the sideline. Sure enough, they kicked it to me, faked the pinball in it. All those motherfuckers ran out there and ran a touchdown. So I'm not, I, like, and, and, he, and, he, and he said to me, it's like, he said, I had confidence. I knew you could do that, Pee Wee. Even though we have Jimmy the Jet, all this, I knew you could do something like that. And the, that, the next year, I went to I went to Buffalo to try out for Buffalo. When I went to try out for Buffalo, right before I left, I called him. I told him, "Hey, I got to try out." Blah blah blah. Uh, Coach Bradley, Bill Bradley, yeah. was oh, yeah. the defensive coach for for Buffalo. So I kind of like Bill. He was he was a funny dude. He was funny, yeah. And Flutie was there also. So he said to me, he "said Pee Wee, as long as I'm a head coach in the CFL, you will always have a job." Man, he was so that, that right there was like that was monumental for me. Yeah, that, he that was, was he was, I mean, Rob, you didn't get the chance to play under him. And everybody knows, if you didn't play for Don, then you have a different uh, perception of Don because he was he was crass and he was an asshole. And, but Sudsy, outwardly, like Suds. Outwardly, hey, like right? Suds. Like, but inside, yeah. oh, man, that you just just come to play three hours a week. I don't care, crap, what you do, if he's your, if, if, you're going to screw around. You weren't on the team. So if you're on the team, that means he liked you. He had utter faith in you. He put you in positions to win. And I, I've never been coached like that before in my life. It was so contrary to how all football coaches coach. It was totally opposite. It was crazy. Yeah. I want to say three stories about Don Matthews. First story, 96, 97. I'm sure you, you, you witnessed this. We had a good team. Everybody knew yep. we had a good team. We were going to win. It's just a matter, matter of points. I mean, we were going to win. But he came in a few times each year, two or three times each year. Hey, can you motherfuckers guarantee me a win this week? Yep. Yeah, coach. All right, no practice. Get out of yep. here. But nobody left. Nope. Everybody did their film study. Everybody went to the weight room and set me. Everybody <laughs> played ping pong. They played, they, they played ping pong in the, in the locker room. We all... I, I think it was more nobody of a left. test, to see who was be, but nobody left. Everybody did their their, their therapy, their this, their that. Everybody was there for two, three hours regardless, yep. right? That's how the confidence that he had in us, that he knew what kind of team he had. Story number two, you talked about he's crass, he's an asshole, he's a jerk. I remember Andrew Stewart, the playoff Big game. Big Stu. Big Stu. Came in late. Came in oh, late yes. for the playoff game. Well, Coach Matthews, he didn't he didn't say anything. He walked to the locker room. He, he looked over. He saw Andrew Stewart getting dressed. And everybody else is already dressed. He's like, Andrew Stewart, you better have the game of your life. Because if you don't, you're cut. <laughs> yeah, he, just was... he, just, he, just walking like, he just said it like in passing. He didn't break stride. Nope. Andrew Stewart had the game of his life. Because he knew. He had the game of his life. Coach Matthews comes back to the locker room. Andrew Stewart, congratulations. You just saved your job. <laughs> 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 the last story is a rookie guy that came in. We, we we signed on the day of, three days before. He's doing special teams, blah, blah, blah. This dude got two personal foul calls, back-to-back -back punt returns or punts or whatever. He pulled him over and said, hey, son, enjoy this because this is your last game. <laughs> <laughs> he still wanted to get stuff out of him. He kept him around till the end of the game. Oh, I, I, he did the same thing to Dan Murphy. Remember our road trip? I don't. I, we can't forget our road trip to Red Deer. But uh, Dan Murphy, we were playing Calgary the week before. The, we were playing Edmonton, and Dan used to play in Edmonton, so he thought it'd be fun. Like as we're staying midweek to go visit his buddies in Edmonton. So Don found out and said, "That's great. Just stay there." And he was <laughs> cut. He never came back. We never saw him again. That little trip down the road was it. You're gone, bud. And that's the way it was. We uh, <laughs> that's good. We had, we had a couple similar stories there, uh, Adrian, with uh, with Lancaster. The difference was when Matthew said there's no practice for you guys, and you guys went to the weight room watch your film. When Lancaster said there was no practice, we went to the beer we, room. We got the rookies. We got the beer room. <laughs> <laughs> we got the beer. 
and we got the rookies to go buy five cases. We sit at Brian Timmons there and sit. And, but but we we had thirty two guys have some beers and then went home and we won the cup in ninety nine. Right. So yeah. It, it, let's say uh, we had we were very fortunate that yeah. we're all friends. You know, we didn't. Sp- you know, Adrian, you and I got to spend a, a lot of years together. You were one year with Hitch. But the respect that we had across, you know, down the highway from any team, anybody in the league, there was a lot of mutual respect. I, you know, as a, from a fan's perspective, some of them were probably going, I ain't watching this because I don't want to hear about an Argo. And, you know, it's still pissed that I went to the Argos and, you know, whatever. It's That's what the fandom is. That's great. That's what the league yeah. should be. But the respect that we had for you and, and all the other guys, and, and I know it came back in reverse because it, it was – we were all doing the same thing, man. We were all just having a good time, trying to be better than what we were the day before. Yeah. Was there? Uh, yeah, you're right, man. It all puts things into perspective. Um, was there one quick, one more question for you? Was there? So I, when I watch you, when I watch you play, I watched another corner way back in the day who's got like 87 picks, Les Brown. So. I don't know, when you came up here, did you have someone, like I know you didn't know anything about it, but when, once you came up here, did you look at old film and did you see any guys, did you ask and, and did you look up the, you know, did you look up the rosters and see who's got this many picks? Because you, you had a similar style to him. You were, you, your cover three, you just kind of sit coast. back. And just, just coast. You coast, but, but, but it, it's here, right? It's like a you safety, know, like it's, you, me- it's mental. You know what? I, I didn't know anybody when I first got here. But Les Brown's name came up very, very quickly. Yeah. Like very, and like you say, then you got to watch him. Who's there's another guy in BC that played next to him too. It wasn't Eric Carter at that time? Wasn't EC no, no, was no, no. after? No, no, no. He was me. Yeah, he was me. It was an older guy. Another guy that had a lot of picks with him. A halfback had a lot of picks with him too. I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but Les, Les came to Les came to the picture. His name started rotating around here, and like from day one. From day one, yeah. so I did. I did watch him. I'm not gonna say I patterned my game off him, but I knew he had a lot of picks. And I knew that yeah. he was a guy that people would stay away from. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. listen, today went by fast, man. I, we got uh, a couple minutes here. We got to wrap up. You know, unlike Rob, I got a job to do, so um, <laughs> we got to get that started and uh, pay the bills. So, but Adrian, I, I man, you're a hell of a teammate, hell of a player. Yeah. Repeated All Star, Great Cup champion, and a good dude, man. I consider you a great friend. It doesn't matter if we haven't spoken how many years we haven't spoken. That, that don't matter. Just, just, just pick up where you left off. Just pick up just where you left matter. off, and some and not a good place most of the time. And it, was, and it wasn't in the gym. Eh? It, it wasn't was in not the gym. in the gym. I didn't glad we didn't pick up the filthy McNass. <laughs> oh yes, I'm not sure uh, that would be a good place for me nowadays. <laughs> Uh, but I uh, just listen. Hold off at the end. Don't don't hang up yet. We're going to say our goodbyes, and then we'll wrap this up with Butko. But uh, from from David Butko, from Rob Hitchcock, from Adrian Smith, and myself, Mike Morielli. This is the Tie Cats Audio Network, and you're listening to the Morielli and Hitch podcast. We'll see you again soon. That's another episode of Morielli and Hitch on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Have a question or a comment for them? Email us at mnh at tiecats.ca. That's M-A-N-D-H at tiecats.ca.